So to me, a Japanese curry is characterized by the really thick, velvety, gravy quality of the curry, just ladled over a hot bowl of rice, and it's just perfection. When I think of Japanese curry, I think carrots, potatoes, onions, chunks of stew beef or chicken. So today I'm gonna to be making a Japanese curry with winter squash and mushrooms. Actually today I am also going to make a katsu cutlet because it is one of the very best ways to eat this curry. I guess I'm like, why didn't I add it in the original recipe? I don't know. If it's a special occasion, you wanna treat yourself, add the katsu. So Japanese curry is something that is in a class of its own. It's not like any other curry out there. It's something that I used to eat once a week when I was growing up. We used to actually eat a boxed version. Today I'm going to try to make a version of that, but from scratch. Golden Curry. This is the brand that we used to have in my house all the time. We had boxes and boxes of this. And you drop a block into your pot of water with your vegetables, your meats, and it kind of magically just thickens everything up within a couple minutes. One thing I don't love about the packaged version is there are all kinds of different additives and preservatives. What I'm trying to do is replicate the flavor of the curry that I grew up eating and love so much, but kind of cutting out some of that other stuff. You can see Golden Curry is made by s &B. They actually make a curry powder that has this exact same flavor profile, which is what we're gonna use. And there we are. So this comes in a very cute little red tin, and this has something like 17 different spices that is extremely nostalgic of Japanese curry. So before I get started on the curry, I'm actually gonna get my rice going so that it's ready for when we are gonna eat. I'm just gonna give this a rinse to get some of the starches out. I'm eventually looking for the water to run pretty clear. I'm pretty happy with that. And into that, I'm adding an equivalent amount of water. So we're doing about two cups today. And then in the meantime, I'm going to get all my vegetables ready for my curry. So I'm going to start with my mushrooms. Some of them are actually from a mushroom producer in, or grower, I guess, in Brooklyn called Smallhold, who I love. So I am just going to do some very light prep on these. Stem my shiitakes and cremini's and for the shiitakes, I'm just gonna tear these into pieces. I'm gonna do the same for my maitake, actually. I'm just gonna leave these in pretty big pieces. For something like the royal trumpets, obviously they're a bit bigger and hardier, so I am gonna cut these with a knife. And mushrooms aren't something you typically see too, too often in Japanese curries, but because this is a vegetarian version, I do want that sort of meaty textural element and also some more flavor that's going to add to the final curry. Doing one medium-ish onion. I'm just going to give this a small enough chop. No worries about being too precise with anything. I love this carrot. Can you just like... Um, I'm not gonna peel this. It's organic and it is very clean. And then our celery. So I'm gonna use two stalks, three cloves of garlic. I'd say that's about a heaping tablespoon of garlic. And then our ginger. We only need about a one inch piece or so. And then I will do my scallion. And I am just gonna use the greens for garnishing. Okay, so this is a kabocha squash. I'm gonna try to cut this and I really hope it works because I just learned this new way of cutting it or new to me way of cutting it. Like basically we're gonna cut a square in the top, pull this out, Ta -da! turn it over, cut a square in the bottom, pull that out. Okay, and then we'll just go right down the middle of this guy. Wow, that's a very beautiful squash. As with any winter squash, there are seeds and stringy things inside, so we're just gonna scoop that out first. Just give that a chop. So what I like to do is I like to stand it on one of its flat cut sides, go in like this, cutting it kind of into wedges like this, and then cut them into cubes. So with kabocha, I mean, one of the other things I love about it is that you can eat it with the peel on. And I think that's everything. We're about to start cooking. 
I'm going to start with a very basic butter and flour roux. And this whole thing is not only going to be the flavor base of our curry, but it's also going to be the thickener. So a roux is a mixture of fat and flour. Uh, in this case, we're using butter as our fat. And once the butter is melted, I will add my flour. I don't want either the flour or the butter to burn. So I'm gonna be pretty attentive at this stage. I'm gonna cook this for about eight to 10 minutes. Ooh, you hear that? I think we're there. As you can see, the color has changed quite a bit. So I am going to add my curry powder and my garam masala. So with the addition of the garam masala, you're going to get some more depth to the final flavor. And just move it around and cook this for about a minute. This is basically the same as those blocks of the golden curry that we saw from before. If I were to let this set and refrigerate it, for example, um, it would look exactly the same. So I'm gonna heat a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil. My oil is hot. I'm gonna add my mushrooms. I like using all different types of mushrooms for something like this because I like the fact that the different kinds of mushrooms bring different flavors and textures. I'm not going to season them yet. The second you add salt, it's going to release the moisture from the mushrooms and hinder the browning because they're going to end up steaming instead of searing. We've got some nice color on these. So I think I'm ready to season these and take them out. And we'll come back to those later. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil and then I'm immediately going to add my onions, Ooh. carrots and my celery. And I'm gonna season that with some salt, some pepper. Get the onions a little translucent, get the carrots and celery just a little bit soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my garlic and my ginger. We're just cooking out our garlic and ginger for a couple minutes, just until they are no longer raw and really fragrant. This smells great. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the vegetable broth. I am using bouillon paste to make my vegetable stock. And then once that comes to a boil, I'm gonna add my squash and mushrooms, and then everything is going to simmer 20 minutes or so until this is reduced by about a third. But in the meantime, we're gonna talk about our pork katsu. A katsu cutlet generally refers to any kind of thinly pounded and breaded piece of protein. So you'll often find it with pork, but you can also see it with chicken. We are going to be using some pork loin today that we've already sliced. It's a leaner cut, but because the katsu and the curry is so rich, I almost like the fact that it's sort of a leaner bite of meat in there. And I am going to use the flat side of my meat mallet to gently pound this out. So I'm looking to get this from about half an inch to a quarter of an inch. Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna season these with some salt and pepper. Eh, maybe just salt. And um, I'm ready to set up my dredge whisk my eggs together with a little bit of water to loosen them up. What I like to do is I like to use two different hands for dry and wet breading. This avoids having both hands end up being clumped in a lot of messy, just like doughy coating. So I'm gonna use my left hand for my dry. I'm just going to dip this in my flour. And then once I dip it in the egg, I'm gonna to switch to my right hand for my wet dredge, place that in my panko pan back to my left hand, and that is ready to go. You know, I when I think of a katsu, I just think of this specific, like, panko dredge. It's almost like, like Japanese schnitzel. So we are ready to fry those. Very carefully lower my cutlets in. It's about 350, I would say, 360 maybe. You know, these are gonna cook in, uh, like, literally two minutes. So you can see that the pork is turning golden brown around the edges already. So we're gonna give this maybe another minute or two on the other side. When you have it so thin, you're really going to just be looking for the golden brown of the crust and that's going to time up pretty much with the doneness of the meat inside. And then I am just going to hit these with a little bit of salt. You wanna do this while this is hot straight out of the fryer because otherwise the seasoning won't really adhere. 
And then I'm going to check on my curry. So at this point, we're ready to add the curry roux that we made. It's reduced some and I can tell that my squash is very tender. So I'm gonna go in with my curry roux, whole thing. Whoa. Stir this in. I'm gonna let this simmer for another about eight to 10 minutes. Uh, oh, you know what, actually, I have to add one more thing. I'm going to add a little bit of honey. You know, almost always you'll find a sweetening agent in Japanese curry, whether that is fruit, like a grated apple, honey, um, sugar, and you can already see it's starting to get that gravy quality, which is great. It's pretty much where I want it to be. I can tell because when I start to stir it, it's starting to stick to the edge of the pot. I'm going to turn this off and I think we're ready to plate some uh, katsu curry. Spoonful of that. Take some of our curry, which like is super, super thick now. And then finally to finish, we're going to slice into one of our katsu cutlets and just gonna plate this right in the middle there. And we're gonna finish off with some scallions. And that is our katsu kare rice with winter squash and mushrooms. It smells so good. Just the fried pork, curry, rice. That is so good. There is truly nothing better than that combo of the crunchy cutlet and creamy, velvety, spicy curry that also has these really wonderful bites of sweetness from the winter squash. The rice is just pure comfort to me. This is just everything I want in one bowl. Try it with the cutlet, but if not, you're just in for a big old winter bowl of cozy right here. Hmm, we could stand here. <laughs> Watch me eat this. I'll eat it all. <laughs>